In this video, we will talk about Koyoshauki, the iconic rebel daughter of the so-called Aztec mother goddess, and we'll show you the AI recreation I did of Koyoshauki based on two of her sculptures created by the Aztecs, master artworks which depict the fate of the so-called goddess Koyoshauki after her epic battle with Huitzilopochtli, the winter sun, as recounted in her stories. Why were her stories depicted so harshly? Stories which we will also analyze surrounding the idea of what Koyoshauki represented to the Aztec people. The idea of the all-powerful nocturnal warrior of darkness, defeated in the end by the blinding light of the sun who brings life. We'll see how these mythological ensemble of ideas are in fact science, explaining with stories the movement of the stars and the passing of seasons. And how these stories build the Aztec ideology of war, being warfare as common as nature itself. Koyoshauki, a key character in the cosmic war between the cold darkness of nothingness and the bright warmth of thriving life, Koyoshauki, even when she is a defeated character, she has been cherished for centuries, becoming a recognizable icon even today in modern day Mexican culture. And along the way we will be visually showing you the different portraits of Koyoshauki which I recreated with artificial intelligence technology. Koyolshauki, a female spirit of Aztec culture which is associated with the moon in certain stories. The Aztecs, one of the many indigenous peoples who inhabited the Anahuac when the Europeans arrived to this our old world. Koyoshauki, in Nahuatl language, the language of the Aztecs, means she of the bells or she who has bells. This because of the bells she wears on her cheeks. She is the spiritual personification of the phenomenon of nature which tries to bring Mother Earth to its heels during winter time. But later defeated by the winter sun, her half-brother, which the Aztecs called Huitzilopochtli. That is why Koyoshauki was always represented in art as a dismembered female spirit. Huge carved monuments were made in her honor by the Aztecs to remember that the cold and lifeless winter will always be defeated. These sculptures show Koyoshauki's face, a face which I recreated with the help of artificial intelligence technology and photo editing software. And this is what Koyoshauki would look like in real life. Or to be more precise, the face of the woman who served as a model for the Aztec sculptures to create this female spirit. I took the facial features from these two sculptures to recreate Koyoshauki as realistically possible as I could. One can identify key features in her face, like the wide round nose, her singular radix, her square shaped face, her buckle fat pad, her eyes, her eyebrows, and her straight hair. That's her face and head. But Koyoshauki has other distinctive elements. Our indigenous ancestors used to identify the different phenomena of nature today called Aztec gods and goddesses, with unique clothing, accessories, objects, colors, animals, stones, headdresses, and even tattoos. These elements were to separate the different spirits of nature according to their aspects and energy they embody in nature. In this case, in the case of Koyoshauki, she wore bells on her face, as her name indicates. Koyol Shauki Koyol From the word Koyoli, which means bell Shauki From the words Shau, which means to apply makeup or to adorn And Ki, 
which roughly translates as she of Shaoki thus means she who is adorned. Hence, Goyo Shaoki means she who is decorated with bells or she of the bell decorations. Although the word implies more about Goyo Shaoki having makeup or tattoos on her face rather than actual accessories. So she had her face decorated with bells on her face. Bells made of gold. This is the Aztec symbol for gold in indigenous Aztec writing. And we can see this Aztec glyph inside the round bells. We can also see that Koyoshauki prominently wears a nose piercing shaped as a trapezoid with a triangle, the indigenous symbol for year also known as the year sign glyph in indigenous writing, a symbol widely used in Mesoamerica, the Anahuac, that is, Mexico and Central America. This tells us about her yearly recurrence, the rebellion she leads along with the Sensonwitznawa, the 400 southern stars, bringing winter against Mother Earth every year. We can also see that Koyoshauki also wears the same year symbol as earrings. Each earring is hanging from what is called an ear flare, similar to an earplug but more complex, used by women, the elite, and according to our ancient traditions, sacred spirits use them as well. Koyoshauki's head is covered by a headdress of feathers with brown shells attached to the base from where feathers irradiate. Back then, sculptors had the tradition of depicting feather headdresses as being wrapped over the stone in which the statue was chiseled. This has created confusion amongst many nowadays, leading to think that, for instance, in the case of the colossal Olmec heads, their headdresses were African cornrow braids, but no, they were not. The same was with Koyoshauki, as her headdress was depicted along with shells. Shells were a native symbol in ancient Mexico, the Anahuac, of all things related to rivers, lakes, oceans, or just water. In fact, the shells Koyoshauki wears are associated with the lack of water that occurs during wintertime in Mexico. And other monuments carved by the Aztecs in honor of Koyoshauki also have somewhere in the imagery the symbolism of the shells and water or absence of water, that is. The time of drought during winter time was the time for war, as crops were already secured and food supplies ready for winter. The Aztec army was able to do its military incursions to faraway lands. This association between the winter droughts and war campaigns was also visually shown on the statues of Koyoshauki. Here, in Aztec writing, we can see the Atlatinoli. The Aztec glyph of warfare, composed by the symbols of water and fire. The Atlatinoli war glyph is located below the severed head of Koyoshauki, which in itself, artistically, attests for a military outcome. But what seems to be a violent depiction, because after all she is shown either as a severed head or as a dismembered woman, is in fact the allegory of the defeat of winter, of darkness, by the hands of the bright but young winter sun, that is, Huitzilopochtli, and the phenomena of the movements of the stars and the earth that attest each equinox and solstice is personified with a story which was the way the Aztecs view the world to explain scientific facts and even calculations. In the story, Koyoshauki, the moon, is the eldest daughter of the sons and daughters of Cuatlicue, Mother Earth. Those innumerable sons and daughters were the stars in the sky, but one day, Cuatlicue became pregnant just for picking up a little feather ball. Koyoshauki became so angry at her mother, seeing her pregnancy as an affront to them. So Koyoshauki rebelled against her mother, Mother Earth, 
along with a faction of sons and daughters, the Sensonwitznawa, that is, the 400 Southerners, or the 400 stars of the South. And these stars plotted against their own mother. Unanimously, they believed their mother's pregnancy brought utter shame to them, and asked Koyoshauki, their leader, what they should do to what they considered an embarrassing situation. So Koyoshauki said to them, the 400 stars and Koyoshauki prepared to wage war against their own mother, Kuatlikwe, who lived in the mythical mountain of Kuatepec. Koyoshauki led the march from the south to the north, and the very moment Koyoshauki arrived with her army of stars, her mother's baby is born, Huitzilopochtli, dressed and armed, ready to wage war against her half-sister, the moon, Koyoshauki. Huitzilopochtli, dressed with blue feathers, fought with his powerful golden fire snake, Shukot. Koyoshauki couldn't hold any longer the attacks made with the Shukot, the fire snake. Even though Koyoshauki was a seasoned grown-up female warrior, she was defeated in battle by a newborn baby who was willing to make a stand against the winter army of darkness and desolation. Huitzilopochtli threw Koyoshauki from the top of Coatepec Mountain. Koyoshauki fell to the bottom where her body broke into pieces. This is one of the reasons, it was said, that the moon seemed to have the dismembered body of Koyoshauki in pieces on its lunar surface. Koyoshauki's rebellion and demise was glorified with art and sculptures by the Mexica Aztecs. Her death means our Mother Earth gets to be avenged, and her defender is the winter sun, Huitzilopochtli, still young but bright enough to triumph. Her monuments also reminds us that this is cyclical, that this cosmic war happens every year. And even when we feel the wrath of winter to remain forever, it will not. For our defender, Huitzilopochtli, will rise to defend life and end whatever advances the winter army of death may have made. Life will endure for every spring to return until the next winter, until the next time Koyoshauki returns again, until the next time the months of barren cold droughts hits our economy and well-being. Until the next time war looms on the horizon. Until the next time days become shorter as the army of Koyoshauki advances in the firmament. And yet, when the sun wanes and lies still, yet again our defender Huitzilopochtli will again astronomically rise on the third day to fend off Koyoshauki and let life bloom again.